Today, I want to talk to you all about how God hears our cries, because a lot of times we think that God is not a God of emotion, that he just is not moved by our emotions. And we've heard it before. I've heard it many a times. And I myself have said it because we're so used to hearing it, that God's not moved by emotions because he's moved by faith. He's moved by his word. He's moved by prayer. And yes, God is moved by all these things, but he is also a God that, that sees our tears. He feels our emotions. He feels our pain. And so I'm going to read to you some instances because... I was praying one day and I was like, oh, Lord, I know my tears don't mean anything to you, but I'm just honor your word. And the Lord was showing me, it's like he's showing me that he, he does rely on, he does listen to our tears. He hears our cries. He is an, a God that is of emotion. He has moved. And so I've come up with all these instances here in the Bible where God heard the prayers and he heard the cries of his people, where his people have cried out to him. And he was not only moved by their tears, but he actually acted on their behalf because of their tears. Now, as you remember, Hannah was married to Elkanah and he had two wives and Hannah's womb was shut up by the Lord. She could not give her husband a child. And so she saw his other wife was giving her, giving their husband a child. They were, this, her, the other wife was allowed to have children and she began to mock Hannah, basically teasing her because she could give, you know, children to her husband, but, but this wife couldn't. So she basically looked down on her. And so Hannah was so sore and bitter and she was just so hurt and distressed. And so she cried out to God. So I'm going to read here from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 10 through 11 and verse 20. And it says, And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. Wherefore, it came to pass when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived that she bare a son and called his name Samuel, saying, because I have asked him of the Lord. So basically, Hannah cried out to God. She let him know the Lord, this is my affliction. Look on my affliction. Affliction, as you know, affliction is something that calls someone great pain and distress. And it says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers out of them all. So it doesn't matter. When you cry out to God, when you're crying, you're trusting him and he sees your tears, he's going to move on your behalf. He's going to move to free you of all your afflictions. Now, Hannah was allowed to have a child. He gave her Samuel. And you know how great Samuel became. He was a great prophet. And Samuel was the one who actually blessed and ordained King David. He blessed him as to be king, the next king. So Samuel was a big deal. So when God heard her affliction, not only did he bless her with a son, he blessed her with a, a, a very important son who became very prominent. Now, as you remember, Hezekiah, Hezekiah, King Hezekiah had cried out when he was told God was about to end his life. So he was getting ready to die. So he cried out to God. So I'm reading here from the book of Isaiah, chapter 38, verses one through five. And it says, in those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord and said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah, saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years. So as Hezekiah cried out and, and heard and prayed unto God, God not only said that he heard his prayer, but he saw his tears, meaning he was moved by those tears. It, it made God to the point where God does not want to see his children distress. He hears our tears. He sees our tears. He hears our cries. And so when the Lord saw that Hezekiah was deeply troubled and he, he was, it was coming from a place of genuineness because he saw his tears. And so because of that, he added on an extra additional 15 years of Hezekiah's life. So he was able to prolong his life. Hezekiah's tears caused God to prolong his life, even though he was getting ready to, to take his life. Now, David cried out to God. David cried many a times, but there was a sp particular time when the Amalekites came and raided David's tent. And his, uh, they took everything. They took all the things that David had they, and all his men, all David's men. When he was away, they took everything. They took their children, their wives captive. And so David and them cried out. And so I'm going to read here from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 1 through 8. And it says, And it came to pass when David and his men were, came, were come to Zik Ziklag on the third day that the Am Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag, and burned it with fire, and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. 
So David and his men came to the city and behold, it was burned with fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captive. And Hinoan and the Jezreelites and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite, and David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people were grieved every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. And David said to Abiathar, the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abiathar brought them brought thither the ephod to David. And David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I pursue after his this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, pursue for thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail recover all. So basically David's enemies came and they raided David's camp and they took all of their possessions and they took the men, all their, their, their wives and their children and they held them in captivity. And so the men were so angry. They blamed David. They were going to stone him. And so David was crying. He wept sore. He was weeping because he was, you know, not only did he fear for his life, but he was worried about his own wives who were taken captive. He felt bad. He felt guilty because his men had lost their children, their family. And so he wept out to God. So God said, you will surely go ahead. He, he allowed him to, to pursue them. He said, should I pursue them? And since God says, yes, you should pursue them. You should re recover everything. Meaning God was going to give him his power and his grace to take back, to defeat these enemies who stole him from him and not only that, he's going to recover every single thing they had stolen. So basically, David's tears caused God to be moved. God was moved by his tears and by the injustice. See, God is moved by injustice. When there, there are enemies who have done us wrong and we cry out, God is sure and faithful enough to hear those cries and answer on our behalf because he is a just God. Now, Remember in the Bible, there were two sisters. There were Mary and Martha, and Jesus was very close with Mary and Martha. They had a brother named Lazarus, and Lazarus was ill. And so Mary and Martha had come to him and told him, hey, you know, he's sick. Can you come and, and heal our brother? And so Jesus was off, you know, tending to what he was doing, and he, he, he did this on purpose intentionally because he they didn't know that. But Jesus was not concerned about this because he knew this was, be, this was going to be used for his glory. And so he says he should not be, you know, he, he did not come to them right away. He waited two extra days before he came to them and saw about their brother. So by then Lazarus had passed away. And so Mary was very distraught and she was weeping. So I'm going to read here from the book of John chapter 11, verse 32 through 35. And it says, then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Now, it says that Jesus saw them crying. Mary, even though Jesus knew that he could raise Lazarus from the, from the dead, he, the tears, seeing the people he loved crying, seeing them hurt, troubled him. It says that he was distressed when he saw them weeping, when he saw Mary and the rest of the Jews were weeping, they were crying. Weeping means they were, there was a deep, soulful cry. There's a deep-rooted pain there. They were crying because they were so pained because they had lost someone. And so Jesus saw that and he was troubled by it. And so he came and he, he went and laid hands on Lazarus. That's when he rose Lazarus from the grave, but it troubled him. See, God is troubled by our tears. When he sees us crying, when he sees us in distress, he's not happy about it. He's not somebody who's not moved, un, un, unmoved by our emotions. It's not like we, we make him seem like he's a God that, that doesn't care. He does care. He himself cried. He cries when we're troubled. He's distressed when we're in pain. He does not like to see our pain. And I'm going to keep reading here where David talked about how God stores his tears in a bottle. He keeps record of our tears and that our cries will cause our enemies to turn back. I'm looking from the book of Psalm chapter 56 verses 8 through 9. It says, thou tellest my wonderings, put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? When I cry unto thee, then shall my enemies turn back. This I know for God is for me. So basically David knew. He said that his tears are kept in a bottle, that God holds our tears in a bottle. He keeps record of every single tear we have cried because God loves us. He cares about us. He's concerned with every single thing. You think he wants to see his creation in pain? You think he cares that he cares that our tears? Imagine you a mother or father. If your child was hurting and something was happening to your child, would you care? A loving parent is going to care when their child is in distress, when their child is crying. Yes, a parent is going to care about that. And a lot of times, you know, uh, we would move to, to fix the problem or to help our child. We're not going to just let our child just sit there and cry and not tend to that child and try to help them with their needs. So that just like we are loving parents, 
God is a loving father and his love surpasses any love that man could ever have. So meaning if we ourselves will be distressed about our child crying, we would not want to see our child in trouble or distressed or sad or in filled with sorrow. That's how God is. He is a God that cares about our emotions. And there is many instances here where he was moved by the tears of his people. Now, finally, it talks about in the book of Revelations where God will wipe away all the tears of his people. I'm looking at the book of Revelations, chapter 21, verse 4, and it says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, no crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. So as you see here, God is a God that cares about the emotions of his people. He is not someone who is heartless. He is not someone who is still, who doesn't care about emotions. He has emotions. He himself cries. He does not want to see his people in, 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 in distress. And there have been many instances in the Bible that he has moved on behalf of his people. And I've given you some of those instances. So I just want to let you know that, yes, God is a God that cares about faith. He cares about prayer. He cares about your worship. He cares about you standing on the word of God. He cares about you living a righteous life. But he also is moved when you are in great distress. Sometimes just the cry, when you cry out to God in pain and sorrow, and, and you ask him to help you, he will move. Sometimes a cry can cause God to move. As you see, he is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He cares about our emotions. He cares about our tears. We can't look at him as a God that's not concerned with our lives. He cares when we are in distraught and distress. He cares when we are in pain. And sometimes he is moved by that. 